What are you looking at? Never seen a bunch of orphans before. Who has? No one ever comes to see us. Perhaps this new one today. What are you? really. I just come from St Francis Convent. What was it like? Terrible. The nuns were so strict they never allowed any fun. Well, I warn you Olivia, you think of it as heaven compared to this place. Oh, I can't believe that. The Mother Superior ruled with a rod of iron. Talk about a monster. Your Mother Superior is a pussycat compared to Mrs Murdstone. She's horrible. She's cruel. She has the foulest temper. Why, if we even so much as cough, when we're supposed to be silent, we get punished. Where is your convent, Olivia? Just outside Stockport. Well, why did you leave it then and come here to Manchester? Oh, I didn't leave. The nun threw me out. I kept misbehaving. What did you do? I flicked ink pellets at the sisters when their backs were turned. <laughs> <laughs> I drew a moustache on the picture of the Order's founders. <laughs> and I burped after meals. <laughs> well, you won't burp after meals here. You're more likely to throw up. Why? What are they like? They're the same every day. Breakfast, dinner and tea. The same revolting swill. It's, it's yucky. It's garbage. It is slop. 
Well, why do you put up with it? What else can we do? Nowhere else we can go. No parents. No relations. Some of us remember our parents. Most of us don't. Do you remember yours, Olivia? No, I think they died in an accident when I was a baby. But look, this might be my mother. She's very like you. Perhaps she is, but I'll never know. You mustn't let Mrs. Mertz go and see that, or she'll take it off you. She wouldn't dare. She would, and she does. She takes all our trinkets off us. She says when we're old enough to leave, she'll give us them back unless we've misbehaved. And, of course, she always finds some way we've misbehaved, even when we haven't. So no one ever gets them back. And then she sells them. Well, she's not having mine. We were just like you, Olivia, when we first arrived. We had spirits. We had hopes. They soon get dashed. Is it that bad? You won't believe it. You know what we have to do for 14 hours a day? We sew. Every day except Sunday. So and so. So and so. What do you sew? Old clothes which Miss Murdstone sells on for a profit. And mail bags. Those are the worst of them all. They tear your fingers to shreds. Sounds like Mrs. Murdstone is right, so and so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her hear you say that, or she'll have you sewing double time. But I'm used to start sewing. The nuns tried to teach me, but I kept making mistakes. Once, I sewed the bottom of Mother Superior's habit so badly, she couldn't get into them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd better learn fast. Otherwise, you're in big trouble. Did I hear someone mention trouble? I hope none of you are thinking of causing any. For, as you know, my punishment is swift and terrible. What do you say, Vicar? Don't you? <laughs> Did I give you permission to snigger?
across the yard. She's trying to climb the gate. She can't be there. They're too high. No, look, she's at the top. She's over. She's free. Yay! Yeah! Go, Bunny Chip. Dick it after her. I can't ever climb the gate. I'm too old. What's that at your belt? The key to the gate. Precisely. Now get going and fetch her back. This is a snowstorm. And as for you lot, in case you get any ideas of following Olivia's example, it's just water for you for the rest of the day and you'll get an extra two hours sewing. <sighs> Grab as much as you like, blame it on Olivia. I don't blame Olivia. I wish I had her spirit. It's going to be a hard day, but it was worth it. No one cares about you when you're out. orphanage. It's worse than the convent, if that's possible. These poor girls, the grown-ups don't even seem to care about them at all. All they do is bully them, treat them horribly and use them to make money. It's not fair. If I was a grown-up, I'd rescue them straight up. That's what I'd do, no messing. Or would I? Would I grow up cold and unfeeling, like Mother Superior and Mrs. Murdstone? Is that what being a grown-up does to you? Well, it's maybe because they've never had any happiness in their lives. Well, neither have I, but I'm certainly not going to let that get me down. You're not from these parts, are you? No, Missy. Or you'd be from Bristol. Well, why don't you go home instead of putting up with Mrs. Murdstone? It's the only life I know. And why do you make that same awful flop every meal? 
Emshaw. It's what Mrs. M showed me to do. But there's all kinds of things. Soup will make a nice change. You could grow your own vegetables and then Mrs. Medicine wouldn't grumble about the cost. Hi, I am thought on that. So I'm if I don't give it a go. Thank you, Missy. Or give me something enjoyable to do. Anyways, where be you going? London. London? Don't ease. What? Don't ease. There'll be a farm with donkeys just down the road. You can always ride one down to London. But that would be stealing! Nay, Missy. Just boring. Mind it. If they go to yes it, they thank you for sure. Let's not take old Dickens advice. Oh, they get you in trouble. Oh, Dickon. I thought you were as mean and nasty as all the other grown ups I've met. We are really very nice. I'll never wash that cheek again. Not that I ever do. Goodbye, Dickon. Goodbye, Missy. Nay, I love you.
too short. I had a lovely dream last night. I had a nightmare. It's called me husband. <laughs> <laughs> I dreamt that this old professor geezer took me up and let me out of top mosh. He showed me how to behave in society circles, and in less than a year, I was a proper lady, mixing with all the toffs. Excuse me, madam. Here you are, sir. Happen to bunch. Hang on a minute. Don't I know you? You're that cricketer fellow with the beard. W. D. Grace. I'm afraid not. I'm George Bernard Shaw. Never heard of you. Have you girls? No. no. But I'm a famous theatre critic and playwright. We never go to the theatre. The music calls what we like. Now your man said, fall over there. And don't dilly dally on the way. I couldn't help overhearing what you were saying about your dream. So? Most interesting. They've given me an idea for a play. Would you care to take tea with me at the Ritz? The Ritz? Gone! You're kidding me! No, I'm in earnest, I assure you. We can discuss your dream in greater detail later. Blimey! All right, Mr. George Bernard Shaw, you're on. See, what did I tell you girls? It may only be for half an hour, but I'm going to be a real ritzy lady. Eliza will never be a lady in a month of Sundays. You're the one that will be a lady, Annie. You've got the posh accent. Must have been how I was brought up. How was you brought up, Annie? Yeah, you never let on about your past. I wish I had a past to talk about. All I can recall is waking up in a hospital up north. Must have been, oh, ten years ago. I can remember everything after that, coming to London and everything. But before, nothing. You poor thing. I heard about that. It's called alopecia. You mean amnesia. Alopecia is what you were born. Like my old man. Clinically bald and clinically lazy. <laughs> Doris is right, and he's got antimic acid. Amnesia! Well, anyway, I heard about this puppy who got it on the end with a crate and lost his memory for five years. It got it on the end again. In a bar fight, it all came back. Maybe we should let you overhead on it. <laughs> Don't you need nothing at all? Not even a missile clue. All I've got is this. Oh, isn't it lovely? You look queenie. You're a bonny baby, Annie. Looks like. You're as pretty as a picture, dearie. Oh, it isn't me. Who is it then? I don't know, but I wouldn't part with it for all the world. Ain't you ever got married then? No. I've had offers, but I couldn't. It just didn't seem right. I don't know why. Maybe he was married, dearie, and he has to see all round in Stop it, guys. You're making me cry. You always very romantic, Flynn. I was a romantic one. Then I married my old man. Well, you're a mystery, all right, Annie. Let's not dwell on it. Let's cheer up and have a cup of char at Sid's cafe. Well, daughter, what do you think? I think we're done for, baby. Unless we get another gang together. Quick! I'm inclined to agree, Dodger. Otherwise, I can see you and I have to get honest jobs. Dodger, Dodger, I didn't mean it. It just slipped up. Fabian, wash your mouth bare with soap. You know you and me ain't cut out for honesty. We gotta think. We gotta plan. To tell you the truth, Dodger, I'm sore the lads. Even that young Oliver what did for us. Well, that's over and done with. Got to look to the future. We had some good times though, didn't we?
Michael. I want to be a singer. Yeah, and I want to be a ballet dancer. I'm serious, baby. I'm going to be a famous singer. From now on, it's goodbye to a life of dishonesty. But Dodger, I can only do dishonest. I ain't suited to anything else. You can be me agent. Now you talk. when I come to teach my weekly lessons. What is it you teach, Eliza? Elocution and English language, like what is spoken by our own dear Queen. <laughs> anyway, must be off. Got a living to make. Goodbye, Olivia. Bye, Eliza. Bye, Miss D. Bye, Eliza. Bye, girls. Bye, Bye Eliza. God save <laughs> Well girls, let's make our latest arrival feel at home. Make friends with them and tell them what we do here. We get up about seven. Those of us who sleep here. We have milk and bread and jam for breakfast. Then we have a couple of hours of lessons. Reading, writing, arithmetic. History, geography. And elocution in English language. Like what is spoken by our own dear Queen. God save our gracious Queen. Then there are useful skills like housework and cooking. And knitting and sewing. Oh, not sewing. I'm useless at it. What are you good at, Olivia? Singing. That's a new one. We don't learn that here. Perhaps you could teach us. I'd love to. All right, girls, stop your chattering while I have a few words with our new pupil. Well, Olivia, what do you think? I think it's lovely. But how do you do it? It must cost a bit to run. I was coming to that. We ain't a charitable institution, and we have to earn our own keep. We've got lessons in the morning, and the rest of the day we earn the dosh. We've got a laundry which brings in fair income, and some of the girls muck in. Some of us do mending and darning. Some of us make hats and ladies' clothes for sale. Some are in part-time service with gentry, or work in shops. Others go out collecting for charity. What charity? The charity that begins at home, dearie. Everyone hands over what they earn, be it a penny or a pound. Half of it goes to the upkeep of this place. It takes my cuts, and the rest is for the girls. Are you happy with that? That sounds more than fair. Seems that Olivia wants to join us, girls. Yay! Now we need to decide what she's suited for. She says she's good at singing. 
Is she now? All right then, Olivia, let's hear ya. You mean sing? No. Sing, 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 sing. All right, it's a little tune, and I don't know what to work, but I can add the bits I don't know. I don't want to split you up. Olivia, you'd better join Emily and Charlotte. They work in the West End. People are richer in the West End. And meaner. It's tough getting money off them. Well, we'll have to be even tougher then. I think you're going to do well here, Olivia. Emily, Charlotte, where's your picture today? Covent Garden. Good. You can take Olivia with you. Teach you the business. Covent Garden? That means I'll see Eliza again. Well, don't spend too long chatting to her. She's a terrible gossip. All right, everyone, back to work. No, darn it, it's a Sunday tomorrow. Let's all have a holiday. Yay! I don't know, Olivia. We've only been here ten minutes and you've offered to give you a holiday. But what the heck? We can afford a little break. We'll start back on Monday. But first, as Olivia wasn't here for it, let's repeat today's lesson.
and I heard a terrible crash early this morning. What happened? She fell down the stairs and bumped her head. Poor thing. She said she'll be along as soon as her headache wears off. Wish my headache would wear off, but he was snoring when I left him this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, here comes Annie now. How are you feeling, love? I heard you had a little fall. Oh, I'm all right. Just a little fuzzy. Was she knocked out, dearie? Yes, and the funny thing was, when I came round, it was as if I wasn't in my own home. I was lying in a field somewhere, with fire and lots of smoke, people shouting, and a baby crying. You must have been dreaming. No, it, it was too real for a dream. You know what you've had? A flashback. What? You bumped your head a little too hard. Now memories are coming back to you. Maybe it cured your ambrosia? Amnesia! Who knows, dearie? And if you keep getting these flashbacks, I know just the person to take you to. Who? A detective. You can find out who you really are. Would that cost a lot of money? Nah, he owes me a favour. Anything else come back to you? Just a little tune. La, la, la. Nice, dearie. Ain't you got a lovely voice? I've never heard that song before. What's it called? I don't know. It just sort of came into my head. I know there are some words to it too, but I just can't remember them. Maybe they'll come back when you start getting over your ad pedestrian? Amnesia! Come on, Annie. I'll take you to him now. It's a bit of a trek to Baker Street, so I'll get us a cabbie. That'll cost a fortune. Billy Archer the cabbie owes me a favour. Strikes me, Arthur of London owes you a favour, Eliza. Three quarters, Queenie. Three quarters. <laughs> Hello, girls. What are you up to? Collecting for charity. But we don't want any money from you. It wouldn't be fair. The charity we're collecting for it is ourselves. Good luck to you. You'll need it. You'll have a tough time getting money off the rich fox round here. They're as tight as a duck's bum. <laughs> we'll see. Here comes the crowd now. Emily, Charlotte, show me how it's done.
taking more than three minutes than we're usually taking a week. We're not finished yet. Look, here comes somebody else. No use trying them, dearie. He's Ebenezer Scrooge. I don't care if he's a Frankenstein's monster. He can still pop up. Mr. Scrooge, I'm sure you want to join all these kind people into giving to charity. Charity? Humbug! Sure you don't mean that. Think of all the poor and destitute children who suffer so greatly. Are there no workhouses? Are there no prisons? There are indeed, sir, but many would rather die than go there. Then they better do so and decrease the surplus population. You, sir, are a disgrace, and you need to be taught a lesson. And one day, you will. You may be determined to hold on to your money, but I am just as determined to relieve you from it. Young lady, no one has ever had the effrontery to talk to me like that. I like you and I admire your nerve. You remind me of myself when young. Therefore, I'm going to do something I've never done before and will never intend to do in the future. Here's a pen. Just a penny? Fine, another sixpence. Sixpence? Someone as rich as you? A mere sixpence? Young lady, your persistence is beginning to annoy me. May this be the last, do you hear? Here's a florin. Metal? You never told me about metal, Annie. 
It just came back to me. And how long have you had this memory loss, Annie? For ten years, near enough. The first thing that I remember is waking up in a hospital. But everything before that is a blank. Post-traumatic shock syndrome. Here, what's your language, ladies in present? <laughs> a purely medical term, my dear. The good doctor is probably correct in his diagnosis. Tell me, Annie, where is this hospital? In Stockport. Come, Watson. Where are we going? To the offices of the Times. There, we shall look up the back pages of ten years ago, see if there are any clues in those esteemed pages. Eliza, Annie, stay as long as you like. I'm sure Mrs Hudson will be more than pleased to offer you some tea and cakes. Mrs Hudson's Victoria sponges are superb. Yeah, you've got the best detective in the world on your case. If he can't solve this, no one can. Oh, I hope he can, Eliza. Come on, then. Let's go have some Victoria sponge and tea. I'll join you in a minute. What is the defendant charged with? Before I speak, I'd like to say something. Proceed. The defendant has asked all 347 other offences to be taken in consideration. They include burglary, fraud, pickpocketing, breaking and entering, safe cracking and highway robbery. My name is Mr Meaders. Find one penny. And what is the offence of which he was arrested? Last night... <gasps> When I was proceeding in an easterly direction, I saw the defendant under a lamp eating an apple and after he had eaten this said fruit, he threw the core on the ground. You mean to say he littered the streets of our fair city? Yes, my lord. This is definitely a hanging offence. Prisoner on the dock, how may you please? In a grovelling manner. Before I sentence you for such a heinous crime, is there anything you would like to say in your defence? Not I. I was a cracking credit to the criminal community where pockets could be picked. I picked at every opportunity. You may be inclined to increment your incredulity. I was a cracking credit to the criminal community. He was a cracking credit to the criminal community. My 
occupation kept me fit as it was far from sentry. Though I may be much despised by persons trying to penetrate, I went about my business with a joke and with a pleasantry. My victims never asked me to return the gifts I lent to. If I could find a way to give my family security Undoubtedly I would become a paragon of purity Although I may have led a life that's been a lie to lawlessness Lawlessness? Lawlessness? Ah yes! I promise to become a model citizen well more or less He promises to be a model citizen well more or less He promises to be a model citizen well more or less he Useful member of society and lead a blameless life without a moment's impropriety. But once and all, I swear that I could give up criminality, and my career will be concluded with complete finality. convincing argument I am not inclined to penalty. Before I pass sentence, is there anyone who can present mitigating evidence? Yes, sir. I am the defendant's daughter and I would like to say this. Oh, please don't imprison my father Although he's been wicked and wild For if you imprison my father They'll call me the compass child You may have good reason to doubt him But he has been cruelly refined I don't know what I'll do without him So pity the compass child My life will be over forever And so will my poor mother's too But I know that my father can be good If you will be good to him too with your plea and have persuaded me to show your father mercy. I will release him into your custody. Just make sure he picks up his apple cores in the future. Yes, sir. Court adjourned. All rise. of imprisonment which could be for eternity Now I can assert with an assertion that's a certainty I will make my comeback to the criminal fraternity
What's up, dearie? Came over all faint again. Olivia. Did you say Olivia? Oh, you haven't met her yet, have you? She's a lovely little girl, and now she's the talk of the town with her singing. How old is she? About 11 or 12. She don't look at all well, love. It's a memory coming back. Just like my old man when he comes home tipsy. Shouldn't have thought he'd remember anything in that state. I'd give her my helping hand with my rolling pin. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, there you are. Mr Holmes, Dr Watson, any news? We have indeed. Annie, it seems that ten years ago you were a passenger in a train crash just outside Manchester. Oh no, so that's what my flashback was. We also found a clue in a handbag in a police station in the area. A birth certificate of a baby. Thank you, thank you. I deserve it. We're cheering for you, Olivia, not you, silly Savaloy. Anyways, I told you to break a leg. And here I am and broke my arm. Serves you right, Fabian. A triumph and that's a triumph. I haven't enjoyed an evening so much in ages. Why, hello Eliza. I see your little companion has become a star. Always knew she would. Olivia, give us a song. Oh, I couldn't. Go on, dearie. Sing, 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 sing. All right, it's a little tune. And I don't know all the words. But I can learn the bits I don't know. If there's a star to wish upon, I wish the best for you. How do you know that? How did you know it? It's something I've known all my life, but no one else does. Except from the one who sang it to her little child. Olivia? Mother? Mother, what happened? Why did you leave me with those horrible nuns? I didn't know a thing about it, darling. You were in a train crash and I lost my memory, but now it's all come back and ten years to make up. Oh, Olivia. That song you made up, how does it go? The bits I don't know. Olivia, there you are. 
Congratulations. I am so pleased for you. And so are the girls. I've given them a day off, especially. Drink to that. And I'm paying! Yeah! 